This conference will now be recorded. Right. So yesterday uh, we have seen how to create the uh, database table, how to create the database table fields by using direct data types. Okay. So we have created the table. Uh, we have created the client independent table. Okay. We have created client independent table with three fields employee number and employee name and employee designation then after creating the table we have generated the table maintenance before generating the table maintenance we have created the function group because whenever we generate the table maintenance some dependent objects gets generated those dependent objects get stored in the function group so as part of table maintenance creation we need to provide the function group and we need to provide the authorization group okay and we need to provide the maintenance type yesterday we provided the maintenance type as one step so in one step what happens only one screen will be generated called as what overview screen in that overview screen only, we are able to perform all the four crude operations. Create, read, update, and what? Delete. Then, just to minimize the navigations for the end user, we have created the T-code for what? Table maintenance by skipping the initial screen. Okay? So, so that the end user can uh, need not remember the navigations in SM30. Directly can run the T-code. It takes us control to the screen where you can maintain the data okay and we have understood the limitations of table creation using direct data types what are the limitations all the character field values are always captured in what uppercase even though you enter it in lowercase or in the combination of lower and uppercase the character field values are captured in uppercase and another uh, issue is we are unable to generate the column headings okay that is one issue then the other issue was we cannot impose any kind of validations on the fields okay and so to overcome all these limitations it is always recommended to create the table fields using data elements and what domains okay so let us understand first what is a data element and what is a domain okay so in the last class we have seen the table table is a dictionary object database object which is a collection of rows and columns similarly a data element is also a reusable dictionary object which provides a description for the field okay i repeat a data element is a reusable dictionary object which provides a description for the field means while creating the data elements we can maintain the descriptions those descriptions will appear on different screens wherever the data element is referred okay so by using this data element we can generate the descriptions for the fields we can generate the headings okay we can generate the labels all those things okay and uh, data element is associated with a domain what is a domain? A domain is also a reusable dictionary object which stores the technical properties of the field like data type and what size. I repeat, a domain is a reusable dictionary object. Why I am saying reusable? Once you create the data element or domain, that data element I can use it in different areas of my SAP system, which is reusable. So a domain is a reusable dictionary object which stores the technical properties of the field like data type and what size. So if you open any standard table, all the standard tables are created by using what data elements and domains. So if I go to SC11, yeah, you can see, uh, let me open a table called as KN1. So if I display this table,
there you can see if you take this field m a and dt this field is created by referring to a data element called as m a and dt okay so these data elements you can see they are not starting with the z or y so it means that they are standard data elements given by sap okay just like your standard database tables we have standard data elements and domains which are provided by what sap itself so what i told about data element a data element stores a description of the field and this description will appear automatically on the screens wherever the data element is referred suppose if you take this field m a n d t what is the data element m a n d t so if i double click on this data element yeah this is the data element so as part of this data element we have an tab called as field label field label if i choose field label yeah there are some short label medium label long and heading are maintained these labels will automatically appear on the screens wherever the data element is what referred okay similarly if i open another data element let me go back if you open suppose if you take the second field tunar what is the data element of this kvnr field again data element if you double click on this data element in the field label tab you can see there are some labels maintained these labels will automatically appear on the screens wherever the data element is used okay let me open another data element landwar underscore gp if you double click on this this also contains what some labels so every data element will be associated with what field label nothing but description this field label description will appear on the screens automatically wherever the data element is what referred done now a data element can be associated any data element can be associated with a direct data type or it can be associated with a domain okay so if you double click on m and dt here this is a m and dt data element if i go to data type tab here you can see this data element is referring to what a domain domain data what is selected what is the domain name here m and dt understood domain name is m and dt so here data element name and domain name are also what same it can be same or it can be different what is the note i gave or not what is the note i told about domain a domain stores the technical properties of the field like data type and what size so you can see this domain is associated with what a data type client and what is the size three so a data element can be associated with the domain a data element can be associated with the predefined data type let's say predefined data type or it can be associated with what uh, object oriented interfaces or what classes reference type understood let me go back let me check the domain of uh, other field so if you take kunnar what is the data element kunnar here if you double click in the data type it is also associated with the domain what is the domain name ku and then r character of what 10 okay let me double click on another data element landwar underscore gp if you double click on this yeah landwar underscore gp is a data element you can see the domain name the domain name is different data element name and domain name can be same or can be different and this domain is associated with what or data type character of what three so most of the domains or most of the data elements provided by sap most of the data elements provided by sap they are associated with what a domain so if you double click on name or underscore gp here is the data element it is associated with what domain name so a data element can be associated with a domain it can be associated with the direct data type or it can be associated with the reference type in object oriented it can refer to a class or what interface that so we understood what is data element and what is domain i'll just summarize before i reuse it a data element is a reusable dictionary object which provides a description for the field 
this description will appear automatically on the screens wherever the data element is what used similarly a data element is associated with what a domain what is the domain a domain is a reusable dictionary object which stores the technical properties of the field like data type and what size done so now my requirement is i want to create a table i want to create a client dependent table client dependent table i want to create a client dependent table so client dependent table means the first field of the table is what m a n d t okay so i want to create a table something like this z645 underscore emp z645 underscore emp i want to create client dependent table so the first field should be what m a n d t m a n d t it stores a client field then i want to create what i want to capture employee data so i'll take employee number employee name and i'll take this as what employee what designation so i'll create a table with what four fields and all these fields yesterday we have created the fields by referring to our direct data now i want to create these fields by referring to what a data element or what domain a data element or domain okay right let's create this so yeah i'll go to sc11 and that dictionary i'll give the table name as z z uh, let me give the table name as something z645 underscore emp right this is the table name let me click on create then as usual i have to give the description let me give the description as something employee data done so already we know the minimum settings for creating the data table. so here under delivery and maintenance let us give what delivery class i'll browse this i'll give the delivery class as something what c which indicates what customizing table maintenance only by customer okay so i'll choose customizing table then i want the user to perform all types of crude operations so i'll choose display maintenance what alone so that we can perform all the crude operations done then i'll go to fields yeah, i want to create what client dependent table so what is the first field here m a n d t what is the purpose of this field it has to store what client number so these fields i can create by referring to direct data types or i can refer to what data element or what domain so suppose if i am referring to direct data type what you will do yesterday we went to what predefined type predefined type okay and m a n t t what is the purpose of m a n t to store the client number client is a three digit number now so if you browse for the data type if you browse for the data type we have one data type called as clnt client if i choose this client field and i press enter i got the length as what three so here also i am creating the field directly by referring to what data type already we know the limitations i cannot maintain description and the character data is always captured in uppercase we cannot impose what validations so better i create this date create these fields by referring to what data elements and what domains so i'll remove this i'll go for what data element and what domain i'm just removing this i'll click on what data element so that this column will be enabled by default it will be like this right so the purpose of MNDT field is to store the client number. So for that, what SAP has done is they have given some predefined data element. What is the predefined data element? MNDT. So I can use the standard data elements also in my custom tables. Okay. So this is the data element given by what SAP itself. So when I press enter, you can see automatically I got the data type and what size I got the description. Okay. So this is a data element given by SAP. When I double click on this, right, okay. 
So you can see there's a data element given by SAP, which is having some field labels. And this data element is associated with a domain, MANDT. What is the data? Client of what? Three. Done. Right. Let me create another field. I'll give the field name as what? EMP number. EMP number. Okay. So this field I want to create by referring to a data element. So since I want to refer to a custom data element, you need to start with what? Z. So I'll give Z EMP number. Z EMP number. Okay. So I'll press enter. SAP will check whether this data element is available. I might have created this data element earlier. I might have used it in other batch. Okay. So data element is reusable now. Just like MANDT we are reusing. This data element also I might have created earlier. So if it is available, if it is available, I'll get the data type and size. If it is not available, it will prompt you to create the data element. So let me press enter. When I press enter, yeah, you can see it is already available. That's why I got one data type and what size. Okay. If I double click on the data element, let me check what is associated with that. When I double click. Yeah, it is already available. Did they maintain any label here? Yes, I have maintained some labels and this data element is also referring to our domain, same name, character about 15. Okay, so I can use it, no problem. But since we are new to data element, let us understand how to create our own data elements. Understood? So every time we will not create, once you create, it is available in the SAP system, I can use it anywhere. But just to understand how to create our own data elements, I'll try to provide a non-existing data element so that it will prompt you to create the data element. Okay, so let me give the name as ZEMP underscore number. ZEMP underscore number. I am not sure whether it is available or not. So I'll press enter. It is also available. It is also available. NumC, alpha numeric of what? 10. Okay, I'll give it as Z E M P N E M. I don't know if they're available or not. I'll press enter. That is also available. Okay. I'll say Z E M P underscore num. I'll press enter. It is also available. Okay. Z employee underscore number. I'll press enter. Okay, Z employee underscore number. When I press enter, yeah, what is saying here? You can see on the status bar, Z employee underscore number is not active. So let us see how to create our own data element. So I'll double click on this data element. Double click on the data element. Say yes. Data element is not available. Create the data element. Yes, I'll create the data element. Short description. I'll give a description as something. Employee number, any description. Done. Okay, so as part of data element, what you'll do generally, you'll maintain the field labels. You'll maintain the descriptions. Okay, so I'll go to what field label tab. Here I can maintain four types of label short label, medium label, long label, adding. It is not compulsory to maintain all the labels. I can maintain all the labels or I can maintain either of the labels, any of the labels. Excuse me. Right. I can maintain all the labels or I can maintain any of the labels. So each label will appear in what will appear on different screens. Okay. Why SAP has given these many labels is these labels are used in different areas of SAP system. In one place, it may pick up medium label. In another place, it may become long label. In some places, you'll have a choice whether to pick up medium, long, short, adding. Okay, so like that, there is a reason there have been four types of labels. So what I'll do is I'll just give what uh, some labels like EMP number meaningful names okay uh, this medium label i'll give it as employee number this long label i'll give it as something employee number this heading i'll give it as something employee number like this wantedly 
I'm trying to maintain different types of labels. When I press enter, it will automatically propose the length there. Then I got it. Fine. So I maintain the labels. It is not compulsory to maintain the labels, but the agenda of going for data element is what? To maintain the labels. Again, if you don't maintain the labels, again, it becomes what? Similar to our direct data types. Done. So this data element, if I go to data type tab, yeah, the, a data element can refer to a domain or a data element can refer to what? A data element can refer to a domain or a data element can refer to a predefined type. I repeat, a data element can refer to a domain or it can refer to a predefined type. So as of now, I'll not go for domain. I'll direct in the data type tab, I'll choose the radio button predefined type predefined type what data type you want to refer i'll browse it let me give it as something integer 4 integer 4 when i press enter it will propose a length for that what is that 10 unless it's a data element can be created by referring to a domain or by referring to what a predefined data type done it's done here okay so what i did here as part of data element i maintained some four types of labels and I'm referring this and referring the data element to the direct data type. Apart from these things, if you go to further characteristics tab, okay, we can attach the search help. So going forward, we will see how to create the search help. Means if you want any F4 help, already we have seen how to associate F4 help in selection screen. Similarly, at the database level also, we have something called a search help. Once a search help is created, Once a search help is created, we can assign it to what? We can assign it to what? N number of what data elements. So that we'll discuss later on. Just leave it. Just leave over the search help now. We are concerned as of now only with field label and what? Data type. Done. So what is the status of my data element? New. So data element is also what? A dictionary object. It is also an independent object. So I need to save it. I need to activate it. So let me save for the syntaxes. It is asking for the package. I'll save it in the local object. Let me check for the syntaxes. No syntaxes and activate this. Then, so my data element is what active. Okay, let me go back so you can see now. I got the data type and what size. Then, let me create another field e name. I'll give e name. I'll give a data element, okay? So since it is a custom data element, I'll start with Z. I'll give it a Z E name. I don't know whether it is already available or not. Let me press enter. It is available, that's why I got the data type and what size. But I, once again, I want to refer to a non-existing data element. So that let us see once again how to create it. So I'll try to give the data element name as Z employee underscore name. I don't know whether it is available or not. So when I press enter, good, it is not active, not available. So let's create the data element. So I'll double click on the data element and say yes. Create the data element, yes. I'll provide some description here. Done. So first of all, let me maintain the label. So I'll go to label. I'll give only medium label. I'll give it as something employee name. Understood. Wantedly, I am maintaining only medium label. No problem. Done. Okay. Then I'll come to a data type tab. So just now we have seen a data element can be created either by referring to a direct data type or by referring to a domain. So here what I can do here also, I can refer to predefined type. So and for employee names, it is a character no generally. So I'll give the data type as something character of what? 20. I can do like this. Okay, so here also 
the data element is referring to a direct data type but again you will have the same issue character field values are always captured in what upper case so in order to address that issue in order to address that issue it is always recommended to create the it is always recommended to create the what character type data elements by referring to what domain i can create like this also but again you will have the same issue the character field values are always captured in what upper case i want to address that so i'll go for what domain this so, so this is deselect and i'll go for what domain right so we have not yet created the data element what is the status still here new so first let me create the domain activate the domain come back and activate your data element come back and activate your data element so here i have to give the domain name so let me give the domain name as z email okay i don't know whether it is available or not if i press enter what is the purpose of a domain it stores the technical properties of the field like data type and what size so if it is already available i'll get the data type and what size here so i'll press enter it is already available okay i can use it but again let us create our own domain so i'll give the domain name as z employee underscore what name z employee underscore name so if you observe here the data element name is same domain name is also what same we can have the same names or we can have different names okay so let me try to give the or let me try to give the same name i'll press enter done what is saying here no actual domain is available so let me create the domain so first create and activate the domain come back and activate the data element so double click on the domain not available let me create the domain All right domain is not available create the domain i'll say yes All right i'll give the description here let me give the description as something employee name done then data type i'll give the data type as something character of something 20 done so i'm associating the technical properties to the domain like data type and what size done after this we had an issue with the character fields earlier now always the character field values are captured in what uppercase so how do we address that means at the domain level in the definition tab we have a checkbox here lowercase if the lowercase checkbox is selected what happens it will retain the case sensitivity of the character field values means if i enter the character field values in uppercase it will be captured in uppercase if i enter it in lowercase it will capture in lowercase if i enter it is a combination of upper and lower or whatever it is it will retain that particular format it will not convert into what uppercase so let me select the checkbox lowercase so don't think that lowercase means it will store in lowercase no it will retain the case sensitivity of the character field value so let me select the checkbox lowercase so because of this reason it is always recommended to create the character field values by referring to a domain so that we'll have the option to select the checkbox lowercase done we have we have a tab called as value range this will come back later on done let me activate my domain what is the status here new so let me save it check for the syntax error no errors let me activate my domain right domain is what activated let me go back domain is what active let me go back so here you can say i got the data pencil now you go ahead and activate your data element let me save the data element check for the syntax error activate your data element done data element is what active go back done so i got the data type and what size so i repeat this data element i created by referring to a direct data type okay here also i can create by referring to a domain but you know this is interior i will not have any case sensitive issue that's why i went for a predefined type then this data element i created by referring to a domain which is having the same name as that of what data element so as part of domain level we have the option to select the checkbox lowercase to retain the case sensitivity of the character field values
let me create another field now and i'll give the field name what emp basic let me give the data element as z employee z employee underscore basic i don't know whether available or not i'll press enter not available let us create the data element i will click on this done create the data element yes maintain some short description here i'll use something basic then then here you have to give what field label field label i am not giving any field label let me keep it blank wantedly i have not given any field label then i'll go to the domain data type okay since designation also character field better we create by referring to a domain only okay so in the earlier case my domain name and data element name were same now i'll give a different name let me give it as something z employee underscore okay z employee underscore what basic okay z employee basic answer okay data element is underscore basic this domain name i am giving it as z employee basic what it is i am giving different name it's our wish i'll press enter it is saying that domain is not available let us create the domain let me double click on this done i'll save it in the local object create the domain yes i'll give some description done i'll give the data type is what something character of something 25 done let me select the checkbox lower case so that we can return the case sense to it now i have a requirement when i enter the designation values designation should be either manager or employee or what supervisor designation should be either manager or employee or what super sorry supervisor otherwise it should not allow me to re-accept that particular value so what i'll do now i'll go to value range tab in the domain level only i'll go to value range tab here you can see i can maintain the fixed values what are the fixed values you want to maintain i want to give employee so i'll give you in uppercase this i'll give it as something manager mb is in uppercase then i'll give supervisor i want only these three possible values let's say i'm maintaining some fixed values as part of what value range tab let me activate your domain i'm trying to activate the domain check for the syntax errors no errors Activate your domain. Okay, domain is activated. I'll go back. <coughs> Activate your data element. Remember, I have not maintained any label for my data element. Remember, okay? Activate this. I'm able to activate. Then come back. Right? So I created all my four fields by referring to a data elements for mndt field i'm making use of the standard data element given by sap so for other fields i created my custom data elements or custom domains any questions up to this part Right, so there are no questions. Yeah, we can have any number of columns to come. What column you want me to take? Yeah, okay. So I'll take a column EMP cell, EMP cell. I'll give the data element here as z employee underscore what cell z employee underscore cell it is not available let me double click on this create the data element yes I'll give the description employee cell right so elementary type I can go for domain or I can go for a predefined type okay so anyhow this is what uh, numeric data type notes i'll go for what predefined type i'll give the data type 
let me give the data type as <clears throat> yeah i'll give the data type as something this one. what is this d c what is this counter or amount filled with comma and what sign okay this uh, okay dc counter and amount filled with what currency and what oh, sorry current amount filled with comma and what sign so i'll just choose this number of positions number of positions is less than minimum number for data type dc so i need to give what the length here okay i'll give the length as what 10 i'll give the decimals as something what two that's it so similarly what pack okay data x type p okay decimals 2 something like that okay at the program level we have what pack here we have what dc it is similar to what pack that's it the difference between interior and uh, this decimals is interiors cannot hold decimal values but whereas this uh, dc decimal data type can hold what decimal values okay done now let me save it Uh, what is saying here maintain what field level so here we have field level i'll not maintain or if you want you can maintain here uh, it's not mandatory let me maintain what should i do uh, employee salary employee salary done let me save it check for the syntax error activate your uh, data limit Then, so you can assume this DEC is similar to what packed at the program level. You will say data EMP cell type P, type P, what decimals what two, something like that. Then, right? So I created the four fields. Similarly, I'll take float also going forward. I'll come across what four float data type also. We generally don't go for float, we always go for pack because float will store the data in what exponential format right i'll come back to that as and when required then i created the table with what four columns second is it clear this dc is similar to what packed this is what you're asking mm. okay any of float also will see going forward float is there currency quantity field many things are there okay then i created the fields Next, as usual, you have to maintain other settings, the technical settings. I'll go to technical settings, data class. I'll choose the data class as something APPL0 to indicate SAP that we are creating this table for storing master data. Then size category, let me give it as zero so that it will allocate the memory for how many records initially 5600 records. I'll choose zero. Done. Let me save the let me save it save your technical settings go back then you have to give what enhancement category now so go to extras enhancement category same thing what you have done yesterday right so i'll choose can be enhanced character type or numeric done then let me save it and as i told you that there should be minimum what one primary key field as of now, I don't have any primary key fields. When I do syntax, it, I got an error. What is the error I got? Z645 underscore EMP specify a primary key. So let me make, and I say we understood that primary key fields should be at the beginning of the table. So I'll make MA and DT as what primary key. Only MA and DT I'm making it as a primary key field. Let me save it, check for the syntax error, activate this, done, I'm able to activate. So, this is a client dependent table, means it contains what MA and DT as the first field, and only MA and DT I made it as what primary key, okay? So, we know that for MA and DT, the values are generated by what SAP itself, done. So, let me try to insert the record here, how do you insert here only? If it is table contents, what is this? Create entries, right? So when I say create entries,
<coughs> yeah, see here for employee for MNDT, the value is provided by what SAP itself. Okay, so let me give employee number one employee name. I'll give it as something Rajesh. Okay, you can observe now Rajesh Kumar. I gave R and K in uppercase, rest of thing in lowercase. So when I press enter also, so it is not converted to what uppercase because. This employee name field I created by referring to a domain, and at the domain level, we have selected the checkbox what lowercase done. Then employee designation. Okay, I gave some value range for that no? fixed values now. So if you browse this, I'm getting the possible values. Okay, if I enter other than this, it will not accept. So let me do what manager done. Then employee salary. I'll give the employee salary as something one, two, three, four. Five six. Okay, let me check what happens. Done. Okay, one two three four five six dot zero zero because I get the decimals as what two two decimals. Okay, done. Let me save it. What happened? Database record successfully created. So if you go back, if you go to contents, if you execute this, yes, we have one record. One Rajesh Kumar manager and what so and so. Done. Now I'll try to insert what one more. Record. I'll try to insert one more record. Right. So we have only one primary key field, which is MNDT. Okay. Now I'll go to what contents. Sorry, I'll go to utilities, table contents, create entries. Again, for the second record also, the value for MNDT is what? 800. Fine. I'll give the employee number as two. I'll give it as something Kishore. And I'll give the designation when I browse it. I'll give the designation as something supervisor. I'll give some data here. Okay, done. I'll click on what? Save. Okay, when I click on save, I got the message. See the message here? A data record with the specified key is already existing. A data record with the specified key is already existing. Because what is the primary key field in my table? Right. <clears throat> okay. So, right. So, data record specific is already what existing. So, what is the meaning here? For the second record also, it has inserted the MNDT value as what 800. Okay, but 800 is already there now. So, that's why it is not allowing me to what insert because this is the only primary key field. Primary key field values doesn't accept what duplicate values since 800 is already there. Since 800 is already there in the first record, it is not allowing to insert that one more record. Already 800 is there. So what I'm trying to say here is, what I'm trying to say is, in client dependent tables, in client dependent tables, okay, minimum we should have two primary key fields. If you make only MANDT as primary key field, what is the problem? I can maintain only single record because for the first record, the value for the client field is given by what SAP itself. For the second record also, SAP will try to insert the same client number now. So since it is a uh, what primary key field doesn't accept duplicate value. So if I leave it like this, doesn't make sense. If I leave it like this, it doesn't make sense because we can maintain only one record. That's the reason you take any client dependent tables. For example, if I take Sorry, if I take K and one table here, you can see this is client dependent table. Minimum, you will have what, two primary key fields. Like that, I can have up to 16 primary key fields. I can I can leave it like this, but what is the problem? I can maintain only single record. That's the reason I'll make the employee number also as what, primary key. I'll make the employee number also as what, primary key field. So that it checks for the combination every time. Now this is called as composite key. So when I save it, okay, I modified the para settings here. Do the syntax check. I'll activate this. Done. It is activated. <clears throat> 
right? It is activated. So we have our two primary key fields, which we call this composite key. So what is the combination available in the table now? Now it checks for the combination. What is the combination uh, we are having here? What is the combination we are having here? Eight and then what? One. So when I insert the second report, you check the combination. Okay, so I'll say utilities, table contents, what is this? Create entries, right? I'll give the employee number as two. I'll give some data. Okay, I'll give the designation. I'll give some salary. Let me save it. What happened? No database could successfully keep because it checks the combination. The available combination is 801. Now this is 802. It checks a combination of those two field values. So I insert one more record. Let me save it. Database got successfully created. So we are having what? Overall three records here. We are having overall three records. And so that's why in the client dependent tables, minimum we should have what two primary key fields. We should have minimum two primary key fields so that it is called as what composite key. Then now, well, when you created the table yesterday or today also, we gave we gave what announcement category. We gave what announcement category. What is this announcement category means? Enhancement category means enhancement is what adding what additional features. Okay, in this case, nothing but adding additional fields. So as of now, my table is created with how many fields? Five fields. Okay, so it's working fine, everything is fine. Now, in future, my customer will say that you want some additional field. You want some additional field. Okay, and uh, or he wants to modify the data types of what existing fields. So we have to check whether we can enhance our table or not. So that that uh, what extensibility is controlled by what enhancement category. So here I give the enhancement category as what can be enhanced character type or numeric means in future I can add additional fields into my table whose data type should fall under what category character type category or what numeric type category if I enter other than this two it will not accept that is the meaning of that okay suppose if I choose what can be enhanced deep what is the meaning of this I can add additional fields in my table which can have any kind of data type it can have character data type, numeric data type raw raw data type we have data type called as raw data type, existing data type, extra decimal string. So it supports any kind of what data type. Understood? So the purpose of enhancement category is it controls the extensibility of the table. Suppose in the K11 table, SAP has given, yeah, it is this option is available only for table as well as structures also. Table as well as structures also. Because structure is also a collection of fields. I should be able to add additional fields in the structure also at later point of time. Not only adding additional fields, if I modify the data types of the existing fields also, it should fall into that category only. Suppose here, SAP has given this k one table with how many fields? 212 fields. So these 212 fields are not sufficient for us. Okay, so according to my customer business requirement, I want some additional fields in the k one table. So I need to check whether I can add additional fields or not. So that is controlled by what? If I go to extras enhancement category, you can see now. Can be enhanced with character type or what? Numeric. So what is the meaning? I can add additional fields in the k table and that additional fields should be either character fields or numeric fields. Understood? So that extensibility is controlled by this particular enhancement category. So for standard tables, any I cannot modify this. I have to go by this uh, available setting. But for my custom table, as of now my table is having these things. 
Okay, initially I gave the announcement category as what character type or numeric. Okay, so in future I can add only these fields, but assume that in future I need to add one additional field whose data type is raw data type. So at that time it will not allow. So what you have to do, you change the existing enhancement category because this is a custom table. You change this enhancement category to what deep. Activate this one so that I can add what additional fields of any data type. So that extensibility is controlled by what enhancement category. Enhancement category will specify what kind of fields, what kind of uh, field data types that can be added to the table at later point of time. Done. Okay, so we have created the table we got this particular four fields. These are five fields. Okay. Any other questions here? So we understood what is a data element, what is a domain, all those things. Data element is a what? reusable dictionary object which provides a description for the field which provides a description for the field and domain is also a reusable dictionary object which stores the technical properties of the field then any questions Right, so in this only, I need to discuss table maintenance, and in the table maintenance, I need to discuss what uh, the maintenance type two step. Okay, but I will not cover now. Uh, most of them are uh, what absent. Uh, anyway, I'm getting out of time. Already it's around eight, so I'll discuss this uh, rest of the part on Monday session. Okay, so today we understood how to create the table fields by using data elements and what domain so monday session we'll see how to generate the table maintenance for this table by using what two step we'll understand what is this two step what is the difference between overview screen and what single screen and we will see whether these labels are displayed or not we have maintained some labels okay we'll check whether those labels are displayed or not done Any questions before I wind up for today? Shivani, I'll share the recording. You join late. I'll share the recording. Just go through that. You'll understand. So before the next class, just go through that so that you can understand the sequence. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sir, in case of uh, enhancement category deep structure, uh, we, uh, we have included the structure. That means it is, it, is a deep, it is a deep structure, right? But we have kept it as a, uh, only character type. Cannot be can be enhanced only to the character level. No, can you repeat that? Where I include the structure here? Uh -huh, not here. In the KNA one table, uh, they uh, SAP has included yeah. the include structure. That means that is a that is a structure. That means it has a set of yeah. I think. each structure means. Mm -hmm. It can have any kind of data types. Right? It's not that uh, since we have included the structure, we have to choose the enhancement category as a deep. No. Okay. 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 The SAP might have included. The SAP might have included. Okay. But we cannot include. We cannot include because they are clearly saying that it is what character type or what means. I can add only individual fields whose data type should be what character type or what numeric if sap would have selected can be enhanced deep means i can add my own structures by using what dot include here i can add the structures by using append structure not by using what dot include okay is it clear ravindra no, no, sir. Uh, can you, can you, can you elaborate? Yeah. Here, uh, what SAP has done here is, see, first thing is we cannot change this. This is fixed. Yeah. What is selected can be enhanced to character numeric means. I can add additional fields in this table. Mm -hmm. I can add additional fields in this table. Okay. And those fields should be either character type or what? Numeric. 
okay mm. i cannot include what structures here because what is this is not selected and can be enhanced dp is not selected one second mm. when i press f1 i just press f1 okay. just want to check what i see here so mm. Ah, but yeah, I can see it. Okay. Clearly, they are saying it. <clears throat> see, uh, what is this? Okay. See, this is not selected here. Right? Can be announced DP not selected. This right. is selected. I can add only fields whose data type is what character type or what memory. I cannot mm -hmm. add the fields whose data type is what what tables references. And what strings? Am I clear? Okay. I cannot okay. add the fields which are referring to table types, which are referring to classes or interfaces, or which are referring to what string data type. Okay, that is the meaning of this. Must not contain any deep data type. These are considered what deep. Not only these things, we have other data types like raw data type, raw data type, existing data type, hexadecimal string. Those fields I cannot add because they are not selected what can be announced deep. I can add the fields, but that fields should be either character fields or what numeric fields. So when I say character type fields, it can be C, N, alphanumeric, D, date, T, time. Numeric means what? Integer, float, decimals. Those come from what numeric data, but I cannot add any field which is referring to a table type, which is referring to a class or interface, which is referring to a string data type, which is referring to a raw data type, which is referring to a hexadecimal string, those fields I cannot add. You understand? Oh. Deep means oh. some deep data types. Deep data type means uh, examples are what they clearly said. Tables, mm -hmm. references to a class or interface, string data types, hexadecimal strings, all those things. Is oh. it clear? Yes, clear. So clear. In, in our case, in our case, what you can do, I can select anything. I can select anything okay if i select this what is the meaning in future i can add additional fields in my table which can also contain what deep data types if i select this it cannot contain the fields with the deep data types but assume that i have selected like this but later on my requirement is i need to create a table which has to refer to a what a class or interface or which has to refer to a internal table that is table type so at that time, what you will do initially, you will change this category. You will change it to what? Can we enhance the div? You will activate this. Then you will add the additional fields. But in custom tables, we can modify. But in standard tables, we cannot. Oh, clear. Clear? It's clear, thanks. OK, so I'll stop now. We'll continue what uh, on Monday. We'll see how to generate the table maintenance with the uh, maintenance type as two step and we'll see how to create the structures and we'll see how to include the structure in the table and we'll see how to implement events at what table level events at table maintenance level done so i'll wind off we'll try. Actually, one more thing before i wind off uh, okay here are people will drop a mail fine leave it no problem okay we'll continue on monday